Praise the Lord and welcome to the Bible Heritage Pentecostal Holiness Church. This is Pastor Randy Richardson and uh, we're going to be studying tonight in the book of Colossians chapter 3. Uh, tonight's uh, message is on uh, workplace relationships. Uh, most of us work 40-50 hours a week and when you're on a job you're around those people sometimes more than you are your own family and just like a family sometimes you don't get along with folks and uh, so we're going to dive into that into what Paul has to say through Colossians chapter 3 so grab your Bible and get it ready to follow along with us make sure you always have your Bible ready to follow along with us so that you can learn how to interpret the scriptures for yourself as you see how we interpret it, you'll learn how to interpret the Bible for yourself in your private reading. But also, you need to always make sure that the man of God is preaching the Word exactly the way the Bible says it. Don't just take it just because, you know, there's snow on the roof here and, and you think I'm a good man and I'm a good pastor. I... I'm not inerrant, and I try my best to always get things exactly right. But you need to always listen to the Holy Ghost and read the Word for yourself and follow along and make sure that no matter who's preaching, that they're preaching the Word of God. Before we get into the Word, let's listen to ordinary people. <laughs> Just ordinary people God uses ordinary people He chooses people just like you and me who are willing to do as He commands God uses that will give him all no matter how small your all may seem to you because little is much when you place it in the master's hand just ordinary people Just like me and you who are willing to do as he commands. God uses people that will give him all, no matter how small your all may seem to be. Because little becomes much. As you place it in the Master's hand. That's exactly right. God can use your little. It becomes much when you place it in the hands of the Lord. Well, let's look at the scriptures. Colossians 3, beginning in verse number 22. There was an owner of a factory and uh, he decided to make a surprise uh, checkup on his employees and on his staff. And so he's walking through the plant one day and he notices this young man just leaning lazily against a post. And he says, young man, just how much are you paid per week? The owner said angrily and the young man said, 300 bucks taking out a fold of bills from his wallet he counts out three hundred dollars slaps the money in the hand of the young man and said here's a week's pay now get out of here and don't come back 
turning to one of the supervisors, he said, how long has this lazy bum been working here anyway? And the man said, he doesn't work here. He's just uh, out here to deliver a pizza. <laughs> it goes to show you, you need to know your employees. You don't need to be slapping a $300 tip <laughs> to the pizza guy because you think he's one of your lazy employees. Well, every, every place that I've ever worked, there's always that difficult person. There's that difficult boss. There's selfishness, greedy people, power-hungry people, kiss-up people, annoying people, cutthroat people, liars, and the biggest one, there's always lazy people. And I've seen people leave a good job because they couldn't deal with this one person on the job that they thought was just, you know, getting by with murder and they hated that they were doing all the work and this person wasn't doing anything. And, and so they left and they went to another place to work only to find that the same thing was at the other place that was there. You see, no matter where you work, you're going to find these people. You're going to find people you don't like. You're going to find people you don't get along with. You're going to find people that do things differently, think differently. They're going to be a different political persuasions. They're going to think differently than you do. And I remember going into a job one time, and, and it was back during the OJ trials, and, and my boss uh, said to me, um, you know, everybody in the whole place believed that O.J. was innocent, except me. I thought he was guilty of killing his wife. He was on trial at the time, and, and my boss screamed, and she said, uh, Randy, do you believe that O.J. killed his wife? I said, yes, ma'am, I do. I believe he killed his wife. She said, go home. Go home now. I don't even want to see your face today. She was so mad at me because I believed that O.J. killed his wife. There are going to be days, there are going to be people that you don't get along with. There are going to be people that you uh, don't see eye to eye. I've had bosses that I despised working for. There were people that I despised working with. There have been people that climbed up the ladder over me and around me that didn't deserve the promotion. I did and didn't get it. Uh, and they gave it to the lazy guy. And I couldn't understand it. I, I was killing myself working, and yet they gave the job away to this person. So that's why it's so important that we don't go by our emotions. Because, Lord, our emotions, we, we're, we're going to have days where we despise everybody there, where we're mad at the world, where we're having a hard day, a difficult day, a bad day. Uh, I used to work for Blue Cross and Blue Shield as a customer service rep. When I first started working for them, I worked my way up in management and had a good career there. But when I first started working there, man, that job was horrible. I despised it. I, I hated being chained to a chair for eight, ten hours a day. And I couldn't get up but just to go to the bathroom. And they timed you to make sure you got back in a timely manner. And you know, just a lot of pressure. And the customers were always chewing you out for things that you... You couldn't help. Maybe the system didn't pay their bill correctly or whatever. And uh, I put a picture of my children on top of my computer, and I put a little sign under it that says, You work for them. And every time I'd want to walk out the door, because my coworkers, I would see them take their headsets off and slam them on the desk and walk out and say, I'm not taking another call. I'm not listening to another complaint. I'm tired of this place. I'm going to get a better job. And they'd walk out the door. Well, every time that they walked out the door, I was thinking, boy, I want to go right behind you. But I would look up at that picture and I would see my children's faces and I would realize I was working to make sure they had a roof over their head, food in their belly. And so when you get a job, you better know that God put you there and that you're doing God's will, that you're working for the Lord. Yes, this company may be paying your salary. 
you may enjoy that career. But the truth of it is, is you're working for the Lord. And so you need to ask the Lord, is this where you want me to work? Is this the kind of job you want me to do? If it's not, then you don't quit until you find another job, but you find the job the Lord wants you to be in. Don't take a job just to take a job, unless you're hungry, of course. Take that job. But then find the job God wants you to be in, and God will open doors that uh, no man can shut. Uh, as I've said, a real good rule of thumb to follow always is never leave a job till you have another job. Well, let's get into the scriptures and see what Paul said to God's people about working relationships. In chapter 3, verse 22, it says, Bond servants obey in all things. Your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. Bond servants. Now, the King James calls them servants or slaves. In our society, we would put in that slot employees. So, uh, employees obey in all things your masters according to the flesh or your employer. Listen to the command that they ask you to do. I've had people uh, say to me, that I hired to do a job, well, it'd be better if we did it this way. And I would say to them, look, I want you to do this, this way. And if you can't do it this way, there's the door. I'm the boss and you're the employee. And I'm telling you, do this job this way. Um, if your boss tells you to dig a hole four foot down and 10 foot wide, and go 10 feet over and dig another hole and put that dirt in that hole and take the dirt that was in that hole over to that hole, you'd say, well, that's stupid. Yes, it might be stupid what your boss asks you to do. But if they're writing the check, if it's their company, if they're the ones in charge, you have to do what you're told. I've had people say, well, it'd be better this way, better that way. Well, it might be, but whoever's paying the check, that's who you better be doing it their way. It's not your company. That's where so many young people, especially, get it wrong. They're, they're, they're like, well, this is mis, mis, you know, injustice. This is wrong. It could be done so much better this way or that way. Well, that might be. Whoever's cutting your check wants it done this way, so you obey whoever's cutting the check, <laughs> and you do it their way. Now, that's the scriptures. That's what God's telling us to do. When you're on a job, you do what the boss says to do, even if you don't like it. And if you just can't get along and you can't do what the boss says, and I'm not telling you to do anything illegal, but I'm talking about anything legal, anything that's Christ-like, you know, if they tell you to do something, you do it. That's the command of the scripture. And if you can't do that, what the boss asks you to do, you better find you another job. Don't quit that one till you get another job. Did you hear that? I'm going to say it over and over and over because so many people quit a job and then it's three or four weeks and they're hungry because they don't have another job. Now there's wanted signs all over town but that don't mean you're going to get that job the next day uh, unless it's the food industry and sometimes you can do that but it's arrogance to think that you always know better than the boss and psalm 138 6 says though the lord be high yet hath he respect unto the lowly but the proud he knoweth afar off in other words god's not interested in your opinion, he wants you to obey his opinion. And this is the word of God that I'm reading tonight. 
So you need to make sure you do what the word says. James 4, 6 says, But he giveth more grace, but God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So if you're humble on your job, God's going to God's gonna make a way. There have been times I've been done wrong. I mean wrong, 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 wrong on my job. And people have, have done me dirty promised me the moon and not even give me a moon pie. And the truth is, is I kept doing my job. I kept obeying what I was supposed to do. I did the right thing. And in the end, I was always blessed. A lot of times the boss is testing you. They'll see if you stop working hard, if you don't get the race they promised you, or if you uh, stop being loyal. Or maybe they bring their brother-in-law in and they put him over you when they promised you that job. Well, suck it up, buttercup. And you do the best you're doing because you're working for the kingdom. So you've got to act like a kingdom kid. You've got to act like a man or woman of God. You can't show your tail and, and carry on uh, because... You're, you were done wrong on your job. You were hired for a penny. You work for the penny. And you do 150% even if they've done you wrong. And I guarantee you, I can guarantee you this by the word of God, that if you will put God's word first and do what God says to do first, God will always make crooked paths straight. I tell people all the time, just do it God's way. Just do it God's way. I was talking to a person not long ago, and they were screwing up this thing and screwing up that thing and messing up this thing and making this poor choice and making that poor choice. And, and I mean, uh, I, I went to that family and I said, look, guys, you're not doing it right. If you would listen to the ways of the Lord, and I'd show them in the scriptures, and I'd open up what the Word says. And I say, if you just do what the book says to do, you will be blessed. And God will take care of you. And God will make a way for you. And, and you say, well, I'm under attack by the devil. Yeah, you might be under attack by the devil. But just like Job, the Bible says in everything, he didn't sin. So I don't care if you've been done wrong. Don't sin just because the boss did it wrong. You stay true to God and you do right by the Lord and God will make a way. Years ago, I was working for a company and they were doing me wrong. They were using me. They were underpaying me. Uh, they wouldn't give me a raise. It was all just pressure, 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 pressure. And so I gave it to the Lord and I said, God, I can't handle this. I can't deal with this. I don't want to go get another job. I actually like doing what I was doing. I just didn't like the pressure from upper management and what they were doing. And so I went before the Lord and I said, God, this manager is an idiot and, and he needs to be gone. And one of my coworkers was a Christian and he and I went in a back room where nobody could hear us. And we joined hands and we both prayed and we said, Lord, you see this idiot that's over us. <laughs> now see, God already knew I thought he was an idiot, so I can say it out of my mouth. I, we both said, Lord, this idiot is ruining this company. He's making poor choices. He's making life hard on us. Get rid of him, whatever it takes, Lord. Move him where you want to move him, but get him out of our hair. Next thing I know, within a few days, he comes to us and says, I've been transferred to another department. I'm sorry I'm not going to be your boss. And under my breath, and me and my coworker looked at each other and kind of grinned. Um, we both knew we, we were responsible for him getting transferred. We didn't go tell anybody. We didn't say anything. We just prayed. And God took care of that man. We got us a wonderful boss that came in after him. And he gave us the promotions and the raises and the things that we deserved. God will take care of things if, if you're, uh, you know, if you'll give it to God. I had another boss one time. 
he would cut your throat in a, in a second. He grinned at you while he was stabbing you in the back the whole time. I prayed, I said, Lord, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I am not going to raise my hand against him. I'm not going to call anybody. I'm not going to say anything. But Lord, will you take care of him? Next thing I know, that man was fired from upper management. They came in and got rid of him. See, you, you give things to the Lord, and God will take care of things. Psalm 138, 6 says, Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect to the lowly, but the proud he knoweth from afar. James 4, 6, but he gives more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 1 Peter 5, 5, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder, yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. If you have a good idea, submit it to your boss humbly. If he doesn't take the advice or shoots it down, just give it back to the Lord and say, Lord, this was a good idea. Uh, in your time, make it right, make a way. Too often we get frustrated as employees and uh, because of that we think that we could run things a lot better and probably we could. The truth be known, we probably could run it better. But if the boss is paying you, again, you do it the boss's way, even if the boss is an idiot, even if the boss is doing it wrong, as long as it's not illegal or immoral, you do it the boss's way. God's word says simply, Obey. Obey. Then the Bible warns us to obey, but not with eye service as men pleasers. Eye service. What is that? That service performed only under the employer's eye. So in his absence, I'm a sluggard. But in his presence, I'm, I'm, I'm ever, all that in a bag of chips. You know the suck-ups. You know the people that are trying to uh, impress the boss and they run and go bring them Starbucks coffee and they do all these other things. We had a lady at Blue Cross and Blue Shield when I worked there. Uh, she would show off in front of the bosses and act like she was the best employee there. But we all knew that between uh, 12 and 2, she was on a floor that was in that building that uh, didn't have anything but chairs and desks. It was an empty floor. We didn't use that floor. She would go down every day between 12 and 2 and take a nap. Now, she was paid to work during 12 to 2, but she always went down and took a nap. And all of us, we saw it. We knew what was going on, and we were frustrated because here we are still doing our job, and we're working, and she's over there sleeping every day between 12 and 2 and getting the same pay, if not more pay, than we were. So what did we do? We took it to the Lord. We said, Lord, expose her. Expose her for what she is because she's just doing the good job in front of the eyes of the boss. She's what the Bible called the eye service. But it wasn't long. She got caught. She'd been with the company 30 years. She had a retirement build up. Do you know what? She lost her job and she lost her retirement. Now that's sad. That's so sad because she chose to cheat the company. God exposed her and she lost her job. And laziness will cost you in the end. It will cost you. Uh, when I was in my first job, I was 17 years old and I made $2 an hour. Well, minimum wage was $2.30. I could have went to the boss and said, hey, you're underpaying me by 30 cents an hour uh, at the time, but I didn't. I worked my tail off. I was to stock shelves, clean the floors, vacuum, uh, dust all the shelves, make sure everything was lined up correctly in the store, and I was to take out the trash, and on and on and on. I had a huge long list of things to do. Sweep the parking lot, go out and pick cigarette butts off the, off the uh, asphalt parking lot out front, all kinds of mess. Clean the windows outside. My job description was just anything that nobody else wanted to do. 
Well, I put a smile on my face and I did every one of them with a the spirit of excellence. And my boss came to me in about two weeks after I got hired and he says, you know what? I've never seen anybody work as hard as you. And he said, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm paying you $2 an hour. I should be paying you more. So he raised me to $2.50, not two thirty, which was the minimum wage, which is all he was obligated to pay, to pay me. But instead, I got another $0.20 cents on top of the 30 that he was cheating me out of. Why? Because I was working and giving it all. I wasn't just doing eye service. I was working for the Lord. I was singing my songs of praise while I was cleaning them windows and picking up them cigarette butts and cleaning them toilets and all the other mess I had to do. I was doing it as unto the Lord. And God bless me. So if you want a, a raise, you give 150% instead of 100% or instead of 78% like a lot of people do. And you work your tail off and God will bless you every single time. I guarantee you that. You can go to the bank with that statement. He says, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God again. We got to realize God's watching us. And if we're lazy, we're, we're a reproach on his name. We're naming the name of Jesus as our Lord and Savior. I'm a child of God. I'm a Christian. So I should be outworking any heathen that works in that company. And I'm not doing it for eye service. I'm doing it because he is watching me. And when he watches me, my raises come from the Lord. My promotions come from the Lord. We do it in sincerity of heart. Sincerity is not seeking somebody's approval. We're just open to the Lord to say, you take care of me. You're my source. And he says, fearing God. You know, a lot of people have lost the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We need to fear God. We need to represent the Lord Jesus Christ to the world. People should be looking at us. My boss, who was Jewish, uh, that I worked for for three and a half years uh, at a pharmacy, on my very first job, the guy that raised me from $2 to two fifty, dollars he later raised me to $8 an hour. Back in the day, that was a lot of money. And um, it's because I worked. In fact, when I quit, he had to hire three people to do what I was doing. And uh, I'm not saying that to glorify me. I'm just letting you know the reason I kept getting blessed was because I worked, I worked, and I worked. Hallelujah. Colossians 3.23 says, And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Whatever you do, do it heartily. Heartily. Do it to the Lord not to men. You say, well, I'm working for such and such a company. Well, that, that's technically true. On your W-2, it'll say their name. But the truth of it is, is you represent Jesus Christ. So you work for Jesus Christ. Verse 24 says, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 75, 6 and 7 says, for promotion, cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Hallelujah. We know that God is the one that gives promotion. God is the one that gives us raises. And it might come from an outside source. You never know what God's up to or what God's going to do. You never know who's walking through the company and sees how hard you work and says, you know what, I want you to work for my company. And they offer you $10,000 more than you're making at your current job. You do for the Lord and the Lord will take care of you. Colossians 3.25, but he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done and there is no partiality. In other words, God's principles are always true when it comes to work. And so if there's somebody on your job that's doing you wrong, give them to God. If they're lazy, if they're not carrying their load, give it to God. 
Don't let it eat your lunch. Give it to the Lord and say, God, you see Jimmy over here. You see John. You see Mary. You see Sally, whoever their name is. And you see they're not doing, they're not carrying their weight. And they're getting by with it because they're sleeping with the boss or, or they're doing this or they're doing that, you know. I tell you this, your sins will find you out. That's a promise from the word. And if you do right, God will bless you. And you can sleep at night knowing you did the right thing. You don't have to say just because they're a sluggard, well, I'm going to be a sluggard. You know what? When they fire him, they'll probably fire you too. So don't get caught up in watching other people. Don't get jealous of other people. So are you having trouble on your job? Are you frustrated because of what's going on on the job? Let me tell you. Are you giving your company over 100%? Or are you giving them 78%? If you're not, you're sinning. And you need to get right with God and give them over 100%. Yeah, but they've done me wrong. Well, bless Pat. Jesus was done wrong and he still died for your sins. You do the right thing. And you give that employer. Uh, I remember when I was passed over for a, a promotion and a raise. And... Uh, I walked over to the man that got the promotion and I shook his hand and I said, Frank, congratulations on your promotion. And the person that didn't pick me saw me congratulating Frank, even though I didn't get the job. She would have, she thought in her mind, Randy's going to be frustrated and he's going to quit because I didn't give him the job. Instead, she saw that I was a man of integrity. And I blessed the man that didn't deserve the job, but I congratulated him. And you know what happened? The next time a job became available, she gave it to me because she realized I was a better employee. They eventually fired that man. <laughs> he eventually got canned. And, uh, you know, so God works that stuff out. You just have to give it to God. And if you're not, I want you to repent and change now. Start tomorrow different. Give that boss to the Lord. Do you know sometimes the Lord's trying to teach us something through a bad boss or a bad co-worker? And if you don't learn your lesson with this person, you're going to go to the next company and have to learn the same lesson over again and again and again and again as long as you... I know people that quit jobs like we change our socks. I mean, they change jobs all the time because they think it's better over here or better over there or they get a dollar more an hour or 50 cent more an hour or whatever. The truth of it is, is you better stay at that job till the Lord releases you from that job. Don't you change jobs just for 50 cent or a dollar. You change because the Lord said it's time for you to go. Do you hear me? That's, the, that's what the Bible teaches us to do. And uh, you give that employee to God. You go the extra mile. You forgive. You, you do all the things the scriptures say. And God will bless you in the end. It may not look that way at the moment. But I promise you this. If you just stay true, it will all come out in the wash. And God will bless you. Well, saints, it's been a great night. And I appreciate your time. You uh, be with us in the house of the Lord Sunday. And we'll see you then. Have a blessed rest of your week. If you need us, give us a call. God bless.